Hey, hello everybody, and welcome back to another Liberal Layer. Today we're going to make a keycap for a Cherry MX Switch. So I'm in Fusion 360, but instead of actually uh, creating the Cherry MX Switch from scratch, we can leverage some awesome designs from the community. So I found some nice ones in GrabCAD, uh, the GrabCAD library. And if you don't already, make an account with them because they have some awesome stuff. So I'm going to type in Cherry MX in the search field. And here are a couple of them. This one's a really nice one from Kevin Wu. And uh, once you have an account, you can go ahead and download the files, which I have already done. And when you download them, you can import them. Uh, so these come in as a step file. There's probably all sorts of other files, but I'm going to be working with the step file here. So I already have that downloaded. So to get it into Fusion, you got to click on, you got to have your data panel open. If you don't have your data panel open, it's this little guy over here. And then I'll click on this button over here, the little cloud with the up arrow, it's the upload icon. We can drag it in here or we can select, I'm going to select it. I will go to the file and then the folder and then use the dot step file. So I'll open that and once it's selected, you can tell it where you want it. So if you have a specific uh, location that you want to put it in, I do, Cherry MX Gamepad and I'll hit upload. This will take a little bit, so uh, just hang tight. All right, and once it's done, it'll give us the status of complete. So I can now close this window and open this up here. All right, so when I open it up, there's uh, it's in this specific uh, orientation. So I, the first thing I wanna do is actually kind of clean this up a little bit. So this is a really, really detailed model. It has all of the little uh, geometries and fixtures that are actually on a Cherry MX switch. Um, this is the one that has these two little uh, nubs on the outside. They're mainly for mechanical uh, like uh, mounting and then the center mount and then your two pins here. And it even includes an LED reference so that you can uh, make sure that your clearances and things are all uh, proper. So this is nice. So the first thing to do is kind of kind of rename these um, rename these components. So this first one is the actuator. There we go. Nice assembly. But one thing I want to do is I kind of want to orient it so that it's kind of makes sense so that the top is the top and it's kind of in the center. So you see here it's kind of off-centered to this um, thing. And, and if you can make things in the center, I always like to. So so to do that, I will select, uh, I will click on, on our first component and then hold down shift and then click on the last component to select all of them. I'm going to change the sculpt environment to model and then I will click on the move uh, object, the move button, and now I'm going to move this around. So Actually, before that, let's go ahead and kind of set our pivot so that it's more centered. And probably the best centered area is the keycap here, or is the actuator. So I'm going to click on set pivot, and then just kind of click on the top surface there. And then I will click the checkbox to uh, accept that. Now I will rotate it, and then move it to where I think is in the center. If we want to get more fine-tuned, we can look down on top of it, zoom in as close as we can. And if you'll notice that now we can't see the, the center, I can just hide all these just by clicking on that. And then I want to be in the center of the sort of grid here. So I'll zoom in more and then just kind of move it down until it is in the center. So that's pretty good. That looks good. I'll uh, bring everything back. the front and we'll probably have this somewhere right there that's not too bad uh, kind of leveling in on the y-axis so that looks good hit okay and that's kind of it so now we have kind of a good uh, cleaned up for the most part <laughs> it's it's already clean I just kind of named some components and just moved it so that it's a little bit more easier to work with when we're actually modeling it and modeling an enclosure around it so the first thing I'm gonna do uh, to make the keycap is create a component so I'll right click on our main assembly, hit new component, name it uh, keycap. Open that so I can see all the stuff that's gonna be in there. By default, it is uh, selected, so that's why everything's kind of ghosted out. If you were to work outside of the component, then you wouldn't, then things would kind of be made outside of it. So we're gonna keep this active like that. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a plane to work off of for the keycap itself. And to do that, I'm actually going to kind of offset the plane. So again, I'm going to click on uh, the top actuator and then click up here where it says construct and then make an offset plane. And that'll ensure that when we start drawing on a sketch, 
uh, that everything will kind of be relative to um, the center of everything here. So I'm going to move this down. And the actuator, or the, the keycaps, if you look at the Cherry MX uh, switches, they actually kind of start a little bit off right here. So this is where they kind of start. So I'm going to put actually negative, or negative 5. That's good. So somewhere right there is good. So now that I have that, I will kind of hide these so I can work within that plane because I can't kind of access it right now. So what I'll do is uh, click on this first component and then shift click again. And if you hit V on your keyboard, you can quickly hide everything. So now uh, with, the, with the construction plane selected, I will create a center rectangle like that. And from the center, now I can draw out the rectangle and even punch in what I want. So I'm going to put 18 by 18 and hit stop sketch. So that's going to be our base profile. Now I need to make a top profile to loft because I'm going to loft between two, uh, two rectangles to kind of make this keycap. So I'll bring back some stuff here using V, the V key. And then I'll create another offset plane, again clicking on the top of the actuator. This time I'm going to go up 5 millimeters. So I can just drag that up until I see 5, or just type in 5 in the little window here or here. Hit OK. And then I will, uh, with the construction plane 2 selected, I will make a, another center rectangle. But this time I'm not going to go in the center of it. I'm going to kind of go somewhere up here. And what I'll do is I'll put in uh, 13 or actually 14 by 13, because if you measure um, uh, an actual keycap, you can see that it's kind of more of a rectangle, not a perfect square. So to select this whole object, you can either click in the center or double click on the, um, on the edges to select the whole chain, the whole rectangle. And now I can hit the M key to kind of move it, and I'll kind of move this down here. And I don't want it to be in the exact center. I kind of want it to be offset a little bit. So somewhere right there looks good. And one thing I want to do is I want to say I want a specific distance between this and this, but on the same plane. So I'll project this in by selecting it and hitting P on my keyboard for project. And then you'll see on this plane we have this, excuse me, we have this uh, purple line, which is a reference of, of this sketch. So now I can say, I can say I want, with the dimension tool, I can say uh, I want a distance from this edge to this edge to be exactly one millimeter. And that's kind of it, really. I'll hit Stop Sketch, and I'll name it uh, Top Profile. Cool. So now at this point, we can lock between these two. So I can select these two by holding down Shift, and then using the Sketch Model box, I'll type in S to bring that up, and then just type in Locked. Quick way to do it. Everything is already set for me. Um, I want a new body. All my profiles are selected. I'll hit OK. And that's kind of our, our little, our little uh, keycap. So you'll notice that there's a little bit more of an angle here than here, which is kind of intentional because uh, we're kind of trying to make um, sort of your standard uh, keycap. So that's kind of what it looks like. Uh, the next thing I'll do is probably just add some fillets to these edges using the F key. And then I'll click from this area, from this corner, and then just drag out a marquee selection. That'll drag, that'll select all the edges that I want. I don't want to chanfer these bottom or fillet these bottoms. I just want to fillet the top and the edges here. So I'll type in something like uh, one millimeter. Maybe that's too much, maybe 0.5, hit enter. Okay, next thing I wanna do is I wanna shell out the bottom. So I'll click on the bottom, right click, and then say shell. And then I'll enter one for the dimension, hit okay. Looks pretty cool. Next thing I'm gonna do is I kinda of wanna be able to see through this keycap. So I'm going to open the materials, uh, the physical materials, click on that. And then under glass, I can drag this over the keycap, hit close, and now I can see through it because it's kind of see-through. All right, so this is your main keycap. And the next thing I want to do is actually make the stem. So that's the, the stem is, is going to come from the, from the inside of our keycap and then kind of wrap around this actuator here. So what I'll do is I'm actually, before I do this, I'm going to make a user parameter. And you know, one of the bad things I just noticed is that we're not capturing the design history. So you want to be able to capture the design history. So I'm going to hit uh, right click on the main assembly, design capture history. And now I can use, now I can actually make uh, user parameters because if you don't, if you aren't capturing the history, which is this timeline down here, uh, then you can't kind of go back and edit things, which is very, very strange why it's not always on by default. 
So under modify, you can find change parameters. I have it up here as a sort of safe. And then I'll create a new user parameter. Let's call this the offset, or the stem offset. And I'll put it, uh, for the expression, the units I want to have at uh, millimeters, um, but I'm going to put 0 0.2 millimeters for the expression. And then if we ever print this out on a 3D printer, FDM printer, or a SLA printer, we can always quickly adjust this uh, value without having to go into the sketch itself. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the surface of the top of the actuator, and then I'm going to hit P on my keyboard, which is the hotkey for projecting it. And what that'll do is it automatically creates a sketch and puts it, uh, and, and then kind of makes a copy of that surface. So I'm going to call this, let me hit OK here because I'm still projecting and hit OK. And then I'll change the name to uh, stem. So there you go. So the next thing I want to do is I want to offset this, uh, this, uh, this edge here, this kind of surface. So to do that, I'll, you can hit O on your keyboard or, or click it up here in, in your sketch. And then when you roll over, make sure you have chain selection turned on because if you don't, then you can just only do one thing. So chain selection will kind of make that whole loop here. You click on that, and instead of entering a, a number, a numerical value, I'm going to put in a stem offset like that. So now it's a parameter. So whenever I want to change it quickly, I can come over here and change it um, because we're going to extrude it and do all sorts of things to it. So that's what I want. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to project this. So if you look at the stem, uh, the way it works is that it gets pushed in and it has to kind of go within this clearance here of this body. So whatever we make, the stem shouldn't kind of go past this uh, this clearance here. Otherwise, your, your keycap will get stuck when you press it in. So what I'll do is I'll project these uh, this kind of square here. So I'll hit P on my keyboard. I don't want to do the whole thing because it'll kind of add these edges as well. So I'm just going to click on the outer edges here, like so. And then if you look at the top here where our sketch plane is, you can see that it now have a rectangle. And I'll hit OK to stop. Because if I click anything else, I'll add in more stuff. So there you go. That's kind of going to be our stem. But the next thing I want to do is I actually have, since I've already done this quite a few times, I noticed that um, this, uh, as a, as a as this shape here, the little, I guess we call it plus sign, as this plus sign is, if I were to kind of extrude this out, it, the taunches don't quite match up because it's such a small uh, geometry, it's such a small thing for, for an FDM printer that I actually found that it's easier if you just kind of cut through this here. So what I'll do is I'll make some lines here, like this. And basically what we're doing is making uh, sort of a clearance here for the stem. So okay, I'll hit stop sketch. Next thing I'll do is I want to extrude this out. So I'll select the profiles that I want. Just these two for now. And what I'll do is I'll hit E on my keyboard as a shortcut for extrude. And I'm going to make this a two-sided direction. So now I, now I can go this way and this way. So I'm going to make this go up until it barely touches uh, the bottom of the actuator. And this is going to go to the top here until I hit uh, the, the base of the cap. So I can say uh, for this side 1, I can make the extension go 2 dynamically to this surface here, like that. And that looks pretty good. So I'll hit OK now. It's the operation set to join, so it'll kind of combine with this automatically to the keycap. Hit OK, and that looks pretty good. The next thing I want to do is let me hide some stuff here. So again, using V shortcut, you can see um, it kind of goes all the way past the kind of opening here. goes all the way beyond more than is necessary. So I'll bring back the stem, and what I'll do is I will extrude these bottom profiles here or these side uh, profiles, and then change the direction uh, from distance to two objects and then go to the bottom there. Hit OK. Join was already selected. So now you can see that I have this sort of uh, thing here. Oh, one other thing I need to do is let me go back into that operation, the, the extrude, and then select the, the inside as well, like this. There you go. So now it kind of covers and fills that in. So that works. That looks pretty good. One thing I, I like to do is kind of just add a fillet here, just to kind of give it a rounded edge. 
Probably one or two is fine. Probably 1.5. That looks good. All right. So that's kind of the keycap. Now, obviously, we could do a lot of different things if you wanted to uh, make this for, uh, if you wanted to add support materials, obviously, that's going to add some challenges and, and things because you're going to need support material. But if you're printing this on FDM printer, you didn't want to do supports. So you can print it. This this surface here can actually be the, the, the bottom of the bed so that it prints without any supports. It just kind of goes up. And that's how I've been doing this, uh, or making all my keycaps. And you can adjust anything you want here at this point. If there's a tolerance adjustment, you can use this user parameter uh, to adjust that easily. So if you see here, I type in like a 0.3. And it, did, it, it'll, it didn't look like an update, but it's such a small value that I don't think it updated. So that's it for that. Um, at this point, if we wanted to 3D print it out, we could do so. Let me just turn these all on and then go to the main active component so you can see through it. So if we want to kind of test it out before we 3D print it, we can kind of move this down. Uh, not sure why that happened there. OK, I can move this down about 5 millimeters or so. That's about where it stops. And you can see that I'm kind of um, intersecting with this top stem, which is not ideal. Oh, it's because this, this, the uh, the actuator needs to move as well. So I would move these two together. So this this tra the travel is about five millimeters, so like that. So this is just to kind of make sure that nothing the LED isn't uh, the sides. None of the side walls are um, intersecting. You can see that the stem is able to go all the way inside of the body, the top body. So it looks pretty good. Let me undo that. Yeah, so that's pretty good. If you wanted to add like curves and stuff like that to this, you definitely could. You can you can make a a profile and cut through this with using a sketch. Um, but again, if you are three D printing it for an FDM machine, um, that adds all sorts of complexities and things. So let's go ahead and, and and add this into our slicer. I already have it in here, but I'll remove it just to add this new one. Uh, I'll right click on it, hit Save as STL. You can save it to your desktop and import it in directly. But there's this cool thing. There's this uh, neat little uh, feature called Send a 3D, 3D uh, Utility. And then I have Simplify 3D set as a custom, but they have like Mesh Mixer and Print Studio, and you can even put Cura. So I'm going to use Simplify 3D. That'll bring it in. Obviously, printing it like this on the bed isn't any good. So I'm going to use uh, the hotkey Command L to pick a triangle so that it adds that to the bed. Flips it right over. I'll hit Center and Arrange. Yeah, it's already centered. And now when I hit prepare to print, I'm using the printer bot simple. Obviously, your settings will vary. I'm using 0.4 nozzle with a uh, point, uh, 1.0 extrusion multiplier, some attraction. For the layer height, I'm using 0.2. You could change to 0.1, but I found 0.2 is just fine. So I'll hit prepare to print. And here's what it looks like. It's very, very small details here. But it, it actually works out really, really well. Uh, with, for me, with PLA on the printer bot, using a 0.2 layer height with a 0.4 nozzle, uh, the tolerances for the offset on the stem uh, works out really well for 0.2 millimeters. So uh, yours will obviously vary. The, your, your filament diameter, maybe you're on an Ultimaker, maybe that'll be 0.3. Uh, so, and, and if you're using uh, some composite material, maybe it'd be 0.4. So you, you really have to kind of test it. And that's why I thought it was a good idea to make a user parameter. So you can quickly change that. All right, so that's kind of it. Um, that's the, the next tutorial. We will uh, create our, uh, our enclosure and we'll add some more components like the slide switch and the actual uh, uh, Adafruit Feather 32U4 Blue Fruit. So we'll create this in the next tutorial. But this one just kind of shows you a, a quick step-by-step uh, uh, -step on how you can create a custom keycap. So that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Thank you, so, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.